Hey guys, I'm back. We're going to start with the sales cycle. And if you notice up here, here's a Latin saying, excuse my Latin here, omnis sela e sela, which means every cell from a cell. You know, it was made by, it was a statement by Virchow. And when we talk about a cell cycle, all cells come from other cells. Now, I just thought it was interesting here. Biology is the only subject in which multiplication is the same as division. So think about that. As we get more and more cells, we actually do that by dividing our cells. All right, so why do cells divide anyway? Well, first of all, there's three reasons. Reproduction. In asexual organisms, um, they reproduce by dividing. For growth, that's like in us, our cells divide in order for us to be able to maintain our growth. And then for repair and renewal, if I were to cut my hand, the cells would repair themselves and fill in the gap by uh, cell division. Now, there's some key terms we need to know, and I'll just briefly go over them. If you hear me say anything about genome, that's basically talking about our whole and genetic makeup, our DNA. Somatic cells are our body cells. Gametes are our sex cells. Chromosomes are where DNA molecules are found, such as the one over here on the right. Uh, diploid is two sets of chromosomes. Haploid is one. Our diploid number is 46, and our haploid number is 23. Chromatin is the DNA protein complex. Chromatids are when you have replicated chromosomes. Centromeres are the little middle section that kind of looks like it holds the chromosome together. Um, it's the waste of sister chromosomes. And you can see it over here on the right. Chromatids, I'm sorry. Mitosis is nuclear division when the nucleus actually divides. Cytokinesis when the cytoplasm divides. And meiosis is how we make gametes or sex cells. All right, well, let's talk about the cell cycle. Cell cycle has basically uh, two parts. It has the interphase part, and it has the mitotic phase. Now, interphase is broken up into three parts, the G1, the S, and the G2. Now, you probably didn't learn about these in regular biology. The G1 is the growth phase. That's when you spend, cell spends most of its time in this phase. The S phase is the synthesis phase of DNA, which, remember, the main thing that happens in interphase is that the DNA replicates itself. And the G2 phase is when it's preparing to divide. Now, the mitotic phase is the simply mitosis phase. That's the PMAP part. And it involves cytokinesis as well. So if we look, we actually add something to it in AP biology. Instead of just simply PMAP, we have PPMAT, which is prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And you can see the five phases over here to the right. So let's talk about each one of them. Prophase. If you remember from biology, first thing that happens is that the chromatin cools up, which means it condenses, so that they become visible. Centrum, centrioles start to form. Centrioles are, are the parts in between. Um, excuse me. Centrioles are, they move to opposite ends of the cell, and the centrioles are, are the ones where the spindle fibers are going to come from. Uh, mitotic spindles start to form, which are the spindle fibers, and the nucleolus and the nucleus disappears. Prometaphase, the spindle fibers actually will reach out and attach to the centromere, and that creates what's called a kinetochore. That's something new. Uh, microtubules at the kinetic, uh, attach at the kinetochore, and then chromosomes begin to move. So metaphase, they line up down the middle of the cell. Um, the, the, the centromeres do, so we know that one pretty well. And then... You can see here what's starting to happen. They're going to actually split, right, with one going one way and one going the other. And that is what we call anaphase. And that's where the paired centromeres separate or split. They move to opposite ends of the cell. All right. And now in anaphase, proteins holding together the sister chromatins become inactive. That's what separates them. So think about it. You always wonder why, how they pull apart. It's because there's a protein holding them together, and then that protein becomes inactive, and that allows them to separate and move the opposite ends. So you end up with that X-shaped structure becoming two single structures. All right. <clears throat> now, in regular biology, we might have thought about this separation as kind of like um, a fishing line and reeling it in, but really it's not. The kinetochore actually uses motor proteins, and they walk the chromosome along the microtubules. So it actually, that moves it down. The spindle doesn't ever, or the microtubule, the spindle doesn't actually pull it to um, the end. The kinetochore actually carries the chromosome to the opposite end. 
All right, and telophase is the last phase, and this is when you have the three things happen that in reverse of what happened in prophase. The, the nuclei are going to start to reform. The nuclear envelope is going to reappear. Chromatin is going to become less visible, so it's going to become less cold. Uh, and then you have cytokinesis beginning, which is split. Oh, and also spindle fibers are going to disappear. But you have cytokinesis beginning. And if you see here, just kind of a brief overview, you know, the G2 phase when it's preparing, prophase, we see the spindles forming, the nucleus disappearing, prometaphase, you see the chromosomes starting to line up down the middle, metaphase, they line up down the middle, the proteins become active, I mean inactive, anaphase, the chromosomes start to go to other ends because the, uh, the um, telomeres are walking down the spindle fibers, and then you get to telophase and cytokinesis when you have the nucleus reappearing, chromosomes uncooling, and you get the splitting of the cytoplasm. Uh, here's just a picture in a real whitefish blastula, a real animal cell. You can see the different phases here. And then cytokinesis is the last one I wanted to talk about real, real briefly. Um, this is when you have what you might ha hear what's called a cleavage furlough. Cleavage furlough is this fold right here. And it kind of folds inward and causes it to split into two cells. All right. And in plant cells, it's a little bit different than animal cells in that instead of just cleavage furlough, you have what's called a cell plate forms. Because remember, plant cells have cell walls, not simply plasma membrane. And the cell plate comes from the Golgi apparatus. Okay. Um, whoops. Now, and this is an example of it in a plant cell. And you can see that's a little bit different, I mean, looking than it did in the animal cell. All right, I hope that helps you a little bit understand the cell cycle, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.